everyone. So you guys know I'm not normally one for kind of like getting into drama with other YouTubers. And so that's definitely not the intention of today's video. I'm also not normally one for critiquing other atheist YouTubers too much. Um, not because I think they're above criticism, not at all, that's not the reason. Um, but just up until this point, um, I mostly feel like the things that I've disagreed with them on are kind of like minor, not really important in the grand scheme of things. And if I was to kind of critique them and call them out or make videos or whatever, it would be more like nitpicking than anything really like substantial. So I haven't felt a need to before. That said, the last few days, there's been a little bit of drama that was brought to my attention by Steve McRae and the whole um, non sequitur show Twitter account regarding a YouTuber known as Emperor Atheist or just Alex, as I'm going to be calling him today because, you know, that's his name. Some of you might know him. He's not the most, like, massive channel. Sorry, Kyra's grumbling down on the floor. Um, but I kind of always thought he was a decent guy and I don't really, like, watch his videos religiously. <laughs> So I did that. Um, no, I didn't really watch his videos too much, and I don't really know him personally, but from what I'd seen, like, the, the small stuff I'd seen, I was like, oh, you know, decent guy. He, he'd always been nice to me, you know, he had some interesting ideas, seemed pretty solid. And then a couple of days ago, he posted some stuff on Facebook that really, really disappointed me and that I thought was worth talking about in a video. Not necessarily, like, to call him out in particular, but because from reading the comments on his post, a lot of people shared some of his views, and I think they're really dangerous and damaging views, and that's what I want to talk about in today's video, using his posts posts as an example. Now, if you can't tell, I'm in a different place. I've been moving house recently. So I moved house on Thursday the 18th. It's been a crazy couple of days. Oh my god, the moving. You can still see I have bo- well, okay, you can't see on this side. I have boxes everywhere. I've only just got this in a decent enough state to, you know, record in. I've only just got my little um, studio set up here. Kyra's a little bit grumbly and like rrr, rrr, because everything's new and exciting. Uh, she's exhausted though, bless her. Anyway, the point is I want to make a video about this sooner, but I couldn't because I didn't have any of this. But I'm kind of glad I waited because, you know, I've seen more and more unfold and I've seen more people talk about it and share their views and here I am. <laughs> so I moved on Thursday, this happened on Friday, and then things have been unfolding over the weekend. That's the point I was trying to make. So this is my first chance to make a video. All of this started when Alex made a post on Facebook about a guy who was taking his 11 year old son to a pride event in his city, apparently after the son came out to him. Now there's a whole other kind of issue to talk about here. I don't want to focus on it too much within this video because it's not uh, the, it's not the main thing I want to talk about. Um, and it's a very, very complex issue. I don't really have time to go into everything in too much detail at the moment. But to give a brief overview of my views, what I would say is that I do believe children can have an idea and start to question or even know their own sexual identity and preferences even at a young age. I mean, I don't know how it is for anyone else. And yes, some people might not be aware of any kind of like attraction or crushes at a young age, but I knew when I was 11 years old and before then that I was attracted to men. And no one ever questioned that. No one ever told me I was wrong. No one ever said, oh, it might change as you get older, love. Even before I was 11, I had crushes on men and boys. I do think if a child, no matter what their age, child, teenager, even young adults, whatever, I do think if they confide in you about their sexual identity or their sexuality or, you know, their gender identity, whatever it is, I do think if they come to you and they confide in you and they talk to you as a parent, as an older sibling, as a cousin, as a friend, as just an older, wiser adult, I think if they come to you and they open up, you listen. You let them know that it's okay to be who they are. You let them know that it's okay to be comfortable with being attracted to whoever they're attracted to. You let them know that it's okay to take their time with things and discover things for themselves and just figure things out for themselves and that they don't have to hide anything from you. That's what you tell them. You don't tell them to suppress their sexuality until they're older. You don't tell them to hide anything. You don't make them feel ashamed of themselves. I also think it's important to acknowledge that accepting or just not suppressing a child's feelings about their sexuality is not the same as encouraging or forcing a child to be sexually active before they're ready or before they're old enough to consent or before they're old enough to fully understand sexual activity. 
I think if a child comes to talk to you about this sort of thing, that then they're clearly ready, they're clearly thinking about it. Not ready for sexual activity, just ready to talk about it. And I don't think there's a point where they're too young to discuss their feelings. If they feel ready to talk to you, you listen. I don't know too much about the original story, but from what I have read and what I've heard and what I've seen, basically this child like came out to their dad or said, you know, I think I might like boys, that kind of thing. And, you know, the dad's response was basically like taking him to a pride event to say, hey, I accept you. This city we're living in accepts you. Society accepts you. We love you the way you are. And we love that you are going to love whoever you want to love. That's the way I saw it. And I think, you know, taking to a, a, a child to a pride event for those reasons, absolutely fine. I don't see anything wrong with that. I do think it's important with kids that are young to make sure that, you know, if they are going to a Pride event or something, they always have a responsible adult with them. Because one, big crowds, big event, you don't just want to let an 11-year-old roam free in a big event like that. Sorry if my chair's squeaking as I'm moving and, like, spinning around. Um, the, the other thing I would say is that with events like Pride, um, there is often a lot of drinking and kind of like partying and that kind of stuff, if you want to call it that. So I would say, you know, there should probably be a curfew for children. Like um, a few years back, I was in Barcelona during Pride and it was amazing, a lot of fun. During the day, yeah, I would have been fine with kids being there. But at night, yeah, I didn't think it was appropriate because there are a lot of drunk people and a lot of people on who knows what kind of substances. So like I say, I think there are certain things that are appropriate for children and certain things that aren't. You you have to use your best judgment as a parent. But I think just because it's a pride event, that doesn't make it objectively wrong for kids to be there. I think on the whole, it'll do a lot of kids a lot of good to see events like Pride. Whether they're straight, gay, questioning, bisexual, asexual, anything, whatever. Like, th their sexuality doesn't matter. But I think it's very good for kids to see a big celebration of people embracing and loving who they are and saying a big screw you to the people who've oppressed them for years and years for no good reason. I think it's really good for kids to see that. So anyway, um, they're just my vague thoughts on that. Like I say, it's a lot more complicated than that. There's a lot more to it. Some parts of some events won't be, be appropriate for kids, but on the whole, I think most of them are. But as a parent, you have to use your best judgment about certain points. But I don't think just saying going to an LGBT event is inappropriate for kids. I don't think that's right. So anyway, Emperor Atheist Alex, his response to this situation was the post. So Dwayne Wade taking his 11-year-old son to gay pride parades, get the F out of here. Which was quickly followed up by the comment explaining why you thought it was wrong, which was... Sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses. Yeah, taking a 12-year-old around grown homosexuals is not cool at all. Hell no. So clearly there's some confusion there about the kid's age. That aside, what exactly is wrong with having a child around grown homosexuals? Are you worried they'll turn the kid gay? Are you worried, you know, these grown homosexuals won't be able to keep their penises in their pants around a fine young boy? <laughs> Stupid, I know. Um, or are you worried that the kid is going to grow up to be a tolerant and kind person? I'm getting a little bit sarcastic now. Okay, ignoring the sarcasm of the last one. With those first two, like, snarky questions I asked, I can tell you there is exactly the same chance of those first two happening with gay men and boys as there is with straight adults and children of the opposite gender. Exactly the same chance. Being gay does not increase your risk to children. It's, it's just so silly to think that. Let's just take a second to make a few obvious things more obvious. One, there is no equivalency between homosexuality and paedophilia. There is no correlation there. Two, and this is a continuation of the first point, Gay people are not more likely to be paedophiles than anyone else. And three, saying this is exactly the same as saying taking a 12-year-old girl or boy around grown heterosexuals is not cool. It's exactly the same as that. And I mean, if you believe that, then we clearly need to ban all kids from all public places ever, just in case they're around grown heterosexuals. I mean, you just don't know what those heterosexuals are going to do. We might start molesting kids just for the sake of it, because we can't control our heterosexual needs and urges and stuff. 
But no, you, you don't want to take your daughter to a restaurant, do you? The waiter might be heterosexual. And you don't want to take your son to the cinema because, you know, when you're sat in those aisles, all those seats next to each other, what if he sits next to a grown heterosexual woman? You don't know what she's going to do with a young 12-year-old boy next to her. You disgusting people are putting your kids at risk, allowing them to be around adults. I'm being stupid on purpose, I know, but you get my point, right? It's exactly the same. Comments from other people included this woman who was worried the kid would be turned gay. And excuse me reading this, like I say, I'm not wearing my glasses. Uh, she said, what does a child know about being gay at 11 years old? He is confused with all the media coverage pushing the gay agenda. They could have waited until he was grown for him to make a grown decision about being gay, not encourage it. Okay, okay, first things first. You know you don't choose your sexuality, right? You can't be turned gay or straight. That's not how life works. And secondly, in that case, we better just get rid of all romance on TV, in films, in games, in books. Oh, all that romance poetry, don't let a kid read Shakespeare. Oh, no, no. Because, I mean, you don't want a gay kid thinking they might be straight because they're exposed to something like Cinderella. Damn, Cinderella with that prince and a young girl and its straight agenda poisoning the minds of our potentially gay youth. Also, don't judge me. It's after midnight. I've had a crazy four days. Let me have a glass of wine. As drunk as I might sound, I'm not. I'm just really tired. This is my first glass. <laughs> Sorry, we've got a little schmoogle in the corner here throwing cushions off the settee. Don't mind her. I really hope the mic is picking up this. She's making a bed. It's so adorable. Yeah, baby. Hang on. Let me show you what she looks like right now. Baby. She is so cute. I love her. Anyway, back to all seriousness. Moving on, the next guy raised this point. Well, if that's his son's preference and let him do what makes his son happy, just my honest opinion. Yes, I agree. Alex, however, did not. He replied, how in hell you let a 12 year old child have a preference like that? Is it really logical to think an 11 year old is positive of his sexual preference now? Yes, an 11 year old can be aware of their sexual preferences. Not all are, but it is possible especially if they've already hit puberty, are going through puberty, and they're just a big bundle of hormones. They're going to notice the people they're attracted to, regardless of what gender that is. They're definitely going to notice that. Taking your kid to Pride, or just letting your kid know, we accept you no matter who you're attracted to, no matter who you love, does not mean that that child's decision or label of sexuality is set in stone in any way. If they come to you at 11 and say, I think I might like boys, that doesn't mean they only have to date boys and men for the rest of their life. Not at all. It just means that you're supporting them and letting them know that you're supporting them and letting them know that you're there for them. That's all it means. Taking your 11 year old son to a pride event during the day is not the same as setting him up with his own grinder account already. <laughs> Although I'm telling you, I bet some 11 year olds have tried. It is super important to let your kid feel loved and supported when they're going through something like discovering their sexuality. Because, as his next commenter said, lots of times LGBT kids kill themselves or feel depressed because they're not supported. Which is completely true. Kids and teenagers who are taught to feel ashamed of their sexuality, who are made to hide it or suppress it, are far more likely to have mental health problems like depression or anxiety, and therefore they're far more likely to self-harm or commit suicide in the future. That's obviously not what we want, and that should be a... Oh, I've got, it. got this new air freshener up there. It goes off every half an hour. Terrified me. Yeah, obviously we want kids to feel supported so they don't feel alone, so they don't feel ashamed, so they don't hurt themselves, so they don't have bad mental health. And often reducing that is as simple as telling them that it's okay, you're loved, we accept you. How is that so difficult for people to understand? The next two comments I want to look at raise some really excellent points too. One person said, teach them about that lifestyle without judgment. And if he thinks it's something he likes, then it's his preference. Excellent point. Another person said, he can't force his son to be something he feels he's not. That's just going to make matters worse for the kids psychologically. This one raised a really interesting point that I hadn't even thought about, but that's actually really obvious when you hear it. That kid is going to be gay, or straight, or bisexual, or pansexual, or asexual, no matter what you do. You can't turn him gay, you can't turn him straight. If he comes to you and says, I think I might like boys, your response 
is not going to change whether he does or not. All it's going to influence is his self-esteem, his feelings of self-worth, how accepted he feels, how ashamed he feels, how happy and content or sad and lonely he feels. And in those cases, it's your job as a parent or an adult in a position of responsibility or whatever, it's your job to make him feel worthwhile. It's your job to, or her, to make them feel loved and accepted and appreciated. You can't change their sexuality no matter what you do. You can just make sure that it's easier for them to accept them, accept themselves. So to move on slightly, and by slightly I mean completely, the big, 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 big problem I had came with the next status that Alex wrote, and that was, let me make this clear, I do not condone homosexuality. If you have an issue with that, you can unfriend me. I'm not here to advocate for your sexual views. This post and the following comments are what really, really disappointed me. And honestly, I was left feeling disgusted by his attitude. So let's go through this particular status bit by bit. Alex does not condone homosexuality. And neither do I. Interesting choice of word there, because to me, and to the dictionary, to condone something implies that you think it's morally wrong or harmful, or incorrect, but you'll allow it anyway. For example, I'd never do it myself, but in my home, I condone the eating of pineapple on pizza. Because let's be honest, it's objectively wrong, but if you want to do that, I'll let those weirdos do that. Therefore, I don't condone homosexuality, but I just accept it for what it is, because there's nothing wrong or harmful about it. I just accept it as a part of life. <laughs> because that's what it is. And as for his whole, um, I'm not here to advocate for your sexual views point, interesting and fair. You don't have to be outspoken about your support for the LGBT community. You don't have to be constantly talking about how it's okay to be gay. You don't have to be constantly going to pride parades. You don't have to do any of that stuff and be an outspoken advocate. That's absolutely okay. However, comments like, I do not condone homosexuality, aren't just not advocating for it. They're actively oppressive and demeaning and therefore homophobic. I can't believe he doesn't see this. Uh, following this, he made a bunch more comments about how it's not okay to have kids around gay men for like whatever reason, for example. So in your mind, it's cool to have an 11 year old around grown gay men? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Really? Question mark, question mark, question mark. But thank God, there we go there. Um, no, but thank God for the common sense of this next person who replied with, it's no different than having them around grown straight men. Men aren't pedophiles because they're gay. Anyone can be a pedophile, gay or straight. Thank you. I, I like this person. They're good. They is the smarts. Another commenter, not Alex, tried to play the whole, like, being gay is just a lifestyle choice. I think I might have spat there. I'm sorry. Um, they, they tried to play the whole, like, being gay is a lifestyle choice card by comparing them to alcoholics, which is just silly because it's not something you can choose. They said, if Alex has said he don't condone alcoholics, would there be an issue? People make choices. Based on these choices, other people have a choice rather or not, that's meant to be uh, whether nah, or not they want to accept those people. And as the wonderful next person says, being gay isn't a lifestyle choice. You're born gay. Thank you. I mean, for one thing, being an alcoholic. I, actually, whether that's not a lifestyle choice or not is a kind of a, a difficult one because some people think the whole um, addiction thing is, you know, biological. Anyway, that's not what we're discuss discussing here. The point is being an alcoholic is dangerous both, both for the person who is an alcoholic and for the people around them who might be in danger of the actions they take while they're drunk or whatever. Uh, not to mention, if you're an alcoholic in the UK, the cost, the NHS, treatment, therapy, or liver transplants, whatever. You know, it, there are some pretty negative consequences overall, right? However, compared to being gay, there's no negative consequences of having a responsible, consensual relationship with someone of the same gender. If you want to see how ridiculous a statement like, I don't condone being gay, is, then try replacing the word gay with something like, being tall or being black because it's the same kind of thing it's just a part of your identity it's determined by your genes your biology like you can't change it and sure there i guess you could say there are certain lifestyle choices based around that genetic factor 
But, you know, the whole thing of like who you're attracted to or what colour your skin is or how tall you are, it's not something you can choose and it's not something that's objectively harmful to anyone. The next commenter made the fantastic point of, Alex, instead of being neutral, you're out here perpetrating the stereotype that gay men can't be trusted around kids. Do not condone all you want. That's your right, I guess, but don't demonise too. How about that? Alex had no response for him. At least not today, anyway. And that was posted two days ago, so you'd think if he was going to respond, he'd have done it by now. Elsewhere in the thread, this absolute douche face made this comment. The problem is the LBT, or whatever you want to call them, has become an agenda. Us straight people can't even watch, watch TV without seeing two sausage smokers kissing. Just, oh, mate. If you're that uncomfortable with seeing two men kiss, I think the problem's with you, not with the people kissing. As a straight people myself, seeing two people kiss d doesn't affect me, whether it's on TV or in real life or in a play or I read about it in, in a book. Seeing or hearing about two people kissing has literally no consequences on my real life. And I don't care if it's a heterosexual couple, I don't care if it's a homosexual couple, no impact. The same douche face goes on to claim, <laughs> I don't know calling people names, but come on, this guy is. And um, he goes on to claim that two men or women should not be kissing on TV so kids can see it, period. I am very comfortable with my sexuality. I don't think he is. So anyway, on, on to his comment about how, you know, kids cringe when they see two gay people kissing. Um, I've got to say, yeah, some kids do cringe when they see adults kissing on TV because uh, mushy stuff, it's disgusting, stop it, and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'd know because obviously I'm a child myself. With those kids, the genders of the people kissing aren't going to make a difference. It's gross no matter who it is kissing because, oh, uh, it's so mushy and horrible and disgusting. Just like, stop it. I'll stop doing that voice now. I don't know why I'm in this mood tonight. I'm just being an idiot. I don't think this guy's ever been around real kids. And let's be honest, if a kid is bothered by two men kissing or two women kissing, it's probably only because the parents or whatever adults they've been around are like influencing in influencing them to be as intolerant as they are, you know? Kids aren't inherently um I guess uh disgusted by gay people. Um that's definitely a taught behavior i think also too just gonna throw this out there but being gay is perfectly natural plenty of examples of animals who are gay not just as humans moving on a little bit and the wonderful casey who you might have seen on godless engineers channel she has some great videos over there i'm gonna leave a description in the link no a link in the description below if you want to go check it out what is wrong with me tonight i don't make videos like a week and i'm just a mess i will leave a link to godless engineers channel with her videos on down in the description below. She called Alex out on his views and stuff uh, with the following comment. You don't have to advocate for anything you don't want to, but can you please explain the whole you don't condone it thing? I just don't understand. You don't accept gay people or you think being gay is wrong and why? Alex replied to her by saying, I accept gay people all the time, but I do not advocate it for preteens. I do not think they're aware of what they want at a certain age. Grown men and women are one thing, but an 11-year-old being around grown gay men at a parade, I think, is too much. Oh, a parade. Disgusting. Oh, I, I will say this again and again and again. Telling a kid that opens up to you about their sexuality that you accept them no matter what is not the same as encouraging them to be sexually active before they're ready to or before they're able to consent. And it's definitely not the same as encouraging or allowing them to be sexually active with grown adults. Taking your child who's opened up to you about their sexuality to a gay pride parade is not the same as saying, ah, you gay men, molest my small child. <laughs> and as for them not being aware of what they want, sure, and they might still change their mind about stuff, but there's no need to ignore the thoughts and feelings and questions they're having at present. There's no need to try and suppress all that. Like I say, I think if a kid feels ready to talk about their sexuality and ask questions and ask your advice and open up to you, don't just suppress it. That's not gonna help anything. Don't tell them, oh, you're not old enough for this yet. I feel like if they're thinking about it, if they're questioning it, if they're coming to you 
and like saying, hey, as an adult, I trust. I want you to know this is how I'm feeling. Don't just tell them like, don't just belittle them and be like, oh, you're not old enough to get it. You're gonna change your mind when you're older. That's stupid. No, as an adult in a position of trust who they clearly care about and respect, and trust. Teach them to respect themselves, to understand themselves, to give themselves time. Teach them to feel comfortable and happy within themselves and don't let them feel ashamed of themselves. Alex went on to say in a later comment, give the child room to grow and make his or her own mind. Don't create a thing that may not be. That's what I mean by advocate or advocate. And once again, I'll say it, you don't choose your sexuality. By telling a kid who's come to you saying like, I feel this way about my sexuality, by telling them, you know, I accept you and understand you, whatever. You're not gonna change their sexuality. You're not gonna sway it one way or the other because <laughs> they're gonna be gay or straight or whatever, no matter what you do or say. So you might as well show them that they don't have anything to be ashamed of. You're not gonna change your kid's sexuality, but you can change how they feel about themselves. You can make sure that they grow into a confident adult with high self-esteem and great mental health. You can help with that. Going back to the comments, and once again, Casey uh, raised the amazing point of exposing children to a variety of types of people, thought, culture, etc., is what gives them the knowledge and groundwork from which to mature and formulate positions on issues. It seems like you think gayness somehow rubs off. I love her. That's amazing. The best. Completely agree. Um, Chris, another YouTuber, again, I'll link his channel in the description below, uh, he made the fantastic point of, sorry, small, never let a child be influenced by a straight man. <laughs> he's like, he's mocking Alex's uh, comment here. Never let a child be influenced by a straight man. Give the child room to grow and make his or her own mind. Don't create a thing that may not be. That's what I mean by... Oh, holy poop, the logic works both ways. That's why it's stupid. A child, a teen, whatever, being introduced to someone who is homosexual doesn't change their sexuality. The worst thing you'll breed is acceptance. Holy poop, what a horrible thing to do. You're a smart guy, what's the point of this take? This is so devoid of logic and any base level of reasoning that I know for a fact you yourself are capable of. Brilliant, amazing, you're the best. Yes, go check out his YouTube channel. Alex then tried to do what I think is a little bit of backtracking uh, by claiming, you straw mined my whole position. I never use the term influence, and yes, that can go both ways, but a child attending a parade where raunchy poop happens, especially in Miami, as I explained to Steve, no child should be exposed to that at 11. I will never agree to that. Now, I understand all pride events are different. The ones I've been to during the day are pretty family friendly, they're fine. The worst you'll see is, you know, some men in shorts, or like, a, a drag queens, or whatever. You see worse at the beach, you know? Maybe somewhere a little bit different, but that's where um, a parent needs to use their judgement about individual events and not just say, all pride events are bad for children, none of it ever, no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't do that, that's silly. Alex, I just, I just need to ask, like, have you ever been to a pride event? Because you do realise they're not just massive orgies, right? I know you probably have that in your mind and you probably think that it's just a bunch of naked people, you know, running around, doing each other. It's not. They're just events in public where laws about public nudity and decency are still in place and still enforced. You know that, right? Again, Chris called him out for this in a brilliant way by saying, yeah, but your post says you don't condone homosexuality. If you don't want children exposed to pride parades, that's fine in and of itself from a certain point of view. But why the post, I don't condone homosexuality? I don't need to straw mat on that for it to be a stupid take. Excellent point. And while we're talking about backtracking a bit, more recently, uh, Alex has posted another status where he said, and I think this was just yesterday? Yeah. The LGBTQ community is not above scrutiny or criticism. You're all bigots yourself for thinking it is. Hashtag purge time. I'm being dramatic now. <laughs> um, honestly, as a standalone statement, I pretty much agree with this. I do agree that the LGBT community is not above scrutiny and criticism just because they're a group who has faced persecution in the past and in the present. That does not mean their actions are perfect. That does not mean the actions of groups within that community and individuals part of that community. That does not mean that their actions 
are above criticism, critique, scrutiny, whatever you want to call it. However, I think, no, I don't just think, there is a huge, huge difference between criticizing members of a community or a group within a community and their actions or their words, their thoughts, whatever. There's a huge difference between that and just saying, I don't condone homosexuality. This one's okay. This one's homophobia. No matter how you spin it. So anyway, it's now way past 1am. I'm very, very tired. <laughs> it's very, very late. But anyway, that's basically the overview of what I've seen happen. There's probably a few comments and other bits that I haven't seen. I know Steve and Alex were kind of having some kind of back and forth on Twitter, but I didn't go into it. I didn't read that stuff all that much. Um, so lots and lots of stuff. There's also other really amazing and intelligent people who did weigh in that I haven't had a chance to like cover. I don't want this video to be too long. I just want to share some, share some thoughts of my own, share some thoughts with other people's, have a look at some ideas and questions. Um, and at this point, I want to hand the conversation over to you guys and see what you think. Do you agree with Alex? Do you not condone homosexuality? Or do you think he's being homophobic and intolerant? What do you think of some of his comments? What do you think about his comments of not letting children around grown homosexuals? What do you think about his comments about letting children at pride parades? Do you think children should be allowed at any kind of pride events in general? Do you think parents should use their discretion about which events they take their kids to, that sort of thing? What do you think about talking to kids about their sexuality when they approach you, regardless of what their age is? I'd really, really love to hear your thoughts down in the comment below. comments below. These are just my opinions, some thoughts I'm thinking about stuffs. You might not agree, and that's absolutely fine. Let me know down below, but keep it kind. Remember, everyone we're talking about is human, and everyone just wants to live a happy life and live the best life they can and be themselves, and that's what we should be encouraging. So. Be kind, look after everyone. I don't know why I'm saying this, I just felt like getting a little bit, a little bit deep, nice, whatever. <laughs> if you're coming to Faithless Forum this year in Texas on uh, next weekend, isn't it? I don't know when this video is going out. I'm filming it on Monday night, but I don't know when it's going out because I don't have Wi-Fi here, so I'm gonna have to find something somewhere. Um, but if you're gonna be in Faithless Forum, I'm rambling, it would be really amazing if you want to come and say hi and meet me. It's going to be so much fun. I cannot wait to meet all of you guys. I cannot wait to meet all the other amazing creators who are going to be there. There's so many people who I've known for so long and like chatted to online who I'm finally going to get to meet. Like Holy Kool-Aid, Thomas, Drew, uh, who's genetically modified skeptic. I, oh, like I'm just, just so many people. I'm just kind of like rambling it. I'm, just, I'm very, very excited to meet everyone and I'm just like, mmm. So it's gonna be good and I'm staying in Texas for a week with Thomas as well and Steve and his girlfriend and it's gonna be brilliant and I can't wait. I'm rambling now. Thank you for watching today. Let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments below. I'm gonna shut up and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much to everyone supporting me on Patreon this month, including Gambit and his chauffeur, Day Sean, Liv's Pantyhose Addiction, Data Jack, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Robert Corte, Peter Carrack, Sir Michael Moore, Christina the Atheist, Christian Opitz, Sage Valariel, Greg Ladd, and Lauren Hart. You're all amazing. I'm